Angler Nation, and welcome to another edition of the Superintendent Corner with Scott Acom. I am Gary Vanna, and we'll be talking about various issues, kind of summarizing the last board meeting and just what's going on. As um, spring break has just passed, and that means snow when you get back. <laughs> How are you doing today, Scott? I'm doing very well, thank you. And unfortunately, you're right. It was not pleasant coming back to snow. So, you know, I. I heard about the weather report during spring break, and I think you would have had to cancel school at least one day. So we were lucky that we were already off that week, so we didn't have to add any more days to the, end of the year. Speaking of snow days, you like that segue? It was very, very nice. What's going yeah. on with the snow days? Yeah, so uh, currently, as of today, we've used 13 snow days, uh, or weather-related days. We had the power outages and, and uh, different things. Um, we have been forgiven the six days that the state always gives us. Uh, we applied for the waiver for three additional days. Uh, that was uh, accepted. And then we were able to use our last February PD day as a, uh, as a, as a day. Okay. Um, so as of right now, our last day of school is Wednesday, June 8th. So we will have half a day on Tuesday, June 7th, and Wednesday, June 8th for exams. Um, but our last day of school will be June 8th, barring we don't have any other weather-related days. And I'm hoping that, gosh, I'm hoping that we don't. <laughs> you know, Mike Vanderbilt was talking about how one time on April 28th we had six inches of snow. Yeah, you know, as coming from uh, music there, we always had the Mushroom Festival of Mother's Day weekend. Yeah. And I can remember it snowing on Mother's Day weekend. In the parade. Do you ever remember good weather for that mushroom festival? Let's be honest. That's true. It's true. That's an early right. festival. But you know, we, we live in northern Michigan. We choose to live here. And <laughs> I always have to remind myself that we get to live where people vacation. So, I don't know. That's, that is true. So, we now know the end day of the mm -hmm. school year. Pretty concrete. I mean, Hopefully. it's still setting up. But, yes. Um, do we know any other dates? Can we do any more planning besides just when school is we, over? We can. We can start planning for next school year. Already? Uh, yes. The, the board approved of the 2022-2023 calendar um, at the last board meeting. So the first day for students is going to be on Tuesday, August 23rd um, for next school year. I, I have a letter ready to go up to parents that will have a link right to the, the calendar and they can pull it up and, and look at the calendar and start planning next year's spring break. And, um, all the fun festivities of, of the holidays. Oh, so <laughs> next year's spring break, you're kind of like my wife. She doesn't feel good when she ends a vacation without having the next one already planned. Yes. And now you can start planning next year's Christmas vacation and spring break vacation due to the fact that the calendar is already out. Mm -hmm. And um, so that means if we start on the 23rd, you should be expecting teachers somewhere around the 14th, 15th of It'll be August? The, yeah, it'll be the week before. Uh, they'll start on Monday, August 15th. So teachers will report August 15th, spend some days in professional development, and then we'll go full board with the students after that. And that gives us two weeks before Labor Day weekend. Correct. All right. So now you're in the know. Well, with that all done, um, we're getting ready to wrap up this year, and we got graduation coming up. Um, and we have a bunch of events with the seniors, but... One of the big events is the honors night, when they get a lot of money given away. They usually receive around sixty thousand dollars to the seniors. Where does that money come from? Yeah, so that money comes from the Midbane uh, Rural Agricultural School Foundation, uh, which is a foundation that uh, provides scholarships for our seniors, um, not only for for college but for trade schools, anything going outside uh, beyond high school. Um, you know, they raise a lot of that money at, at their auction. Uh, they haven't had, been able to have their auction, I believe, the last two years uh, due, to, due to COVID. Um, but this coming up, or coming up soon, Saturday, um, April 16th, uh, they'll be hosting their auction here um, in the high school gym. Uh, doors will open at 5 o'clock, and they'll have desserts and silent auction beginning then. But the auction will begin at 6 o'clock on the 16th, and we'd love to have um, people attend the auction. Um, and be able to uh, to purchase some uh, nice uh, prizes, some nice nice gifts. Um, they can find a bill of sale at the McBain Foundation uh, website, which is www.mrasf.org. 
which is McBain Rural Agricultural School Foundation. All right, and um, not making any promises, but I might have a tech guy that will put a little link on this video so you can just take your cell phone and take a picture of the QR code that should open up directly to the website. And I'll try to get that on there also through the Rambler Review class. So a lot, lot easier than just typing it in, right? It, it is, yeah, especially absolutely. on your phone. And absolutely. All right, so we got a job today. Thank you. <laughs> oh, tell you what, this is kind of a stressful week. Dot mm -hmm. my eyes, cross my teeth, because next week, the return of the senior trip during the regular time. We um we were able to go last year on an abbreviated one. But as far as I know, we have a senior trip leaving this Sunday. Uh, bus arrives at 11, 11.30, we roll out. So people can still go to Palm Sunday services and church. Mm -hmm. But uh, no vaccinations required anywhere. Awesome. No masks required anywhere. The museums are still have limited hours, but it's more due to lack of employees than it is to COVID sure. benefit or um, COVID-related items. So, uh, see your trips going on. Yes. We'll be leaving Sunday and coming back very late or early Friday morning, late Thursday night. That's wonderful news. I know the kids are excited to hear them talking about it in the hallways, and they're really looking forward to it. And, and we have 37 students going, which may not sound like a, a large number, except there's only 53 kids graduating, so we're around 70% of the senior class still going on to the senior trip. And we're one of the very few schools that still has a senior trip across the nation. So yeah, it's a great experience for kids. And you were telling me something too uh, yesterday um, about all the money that they had raised for the trip. Through some very generous Lake County, let's give a shout out to Lake County, they hired the seniors to do two work bees for them and paid them $5,000 over two work bees. Wow. The fact that we had concessions open back up for the 50th anniversary, this senior class was able to raise enough money to have the lowest cost for the senior trip in the last 15 years. That's wonderful. And that's two years of not being able to fundraise due to COVID. They still were able to get uh, the lowest cost out in 15 years. So we're excited. Looking forward to it. Going to be shoving off soon. So, oh, so talk about fundraising. You're talking about a new organization going on here. I see up there some about athletic boosters. What what is, what do you want for athletic boosters? What concept are we talking about here? Yeah, so one of the things that was uh, when I started here was brought to me uh, with several individuals was wanting to launch an athletic boosters program for the, for the district. Um, I was kind of a little surprised that the Bain didn't have an athletic boosters program. Um, so we're having a, an initial meeting on uh, Thursday, April 21st at 6 o'clock in the elementary cafeteria uh, just to see what type of interest there is in boosters, um, what the boosters can accomplish. We don't want to take away from anything that's being successful now. Um, that would be my charge to the boosters is, you know, we're at you know, the concessions because seniors like to, to work for their senior trip. Yeah, um, and it's, you know, eight kids paid for their full trip just working concessions. That's good. I mean, you can't take that away from them or any individual sports or what they're already doing that's successful in raising money. Um, but something just to kind of be there to help enhance and, and provide needs um, for the booster or for the athletic programs. Um, so Thursday, April 21st, we're just kind of gathering around to see uh, uh, the interest there um, and hoping to launch for next school year an athletic boosters program. Now, I don't know if I should put this on the record, but my suggestion, of, I would like to see an online spirit store open 24-7, 365 days a year. That'd be great. Just put that plug in there. All right, so, and so you guys are also open to, anybody can join this? Yeah, so we're, we're like I said, we're, we're starting out initially to see the, the interest, um, then we'll probably schedule a second meeting to maybe um, uh, elect a, a board, an athletic booster board, and then they can start running, running from there. And where's this meeting at again at time yep, Thursday, April 21st at 6 o'clock in the elementary cafeteria. All right. Well, um, there's something else going on that day. I don't know if you realize that. But the MEA, Michigan Education Association Local, has come out with their Outstanding Person in Education and Outstanding Support 
person in education. Do you know who the two winners are? I do know who the two winners are. Who is our outstanding person in education or the teacher of the year? Uh, that is Mrs. Ke Ms. Kelly O'Keefe. Kelly O'Keefe, the teacher of the year. Congratulations, Kelly. That's a great honor and well-deserved. And who yeah, is the well support? Um, Mrs. Ann, Mrs. Ann Reese. Ann Reese. Once again, she is a lifelong Bainer's done a great job here. I know personally that she really touched my son Caleb through some struggles through elementary and middle school. Great honor for her both. So I want to just give a shout out to Kelly O'Keefe and Ann Reese on being Opie Award winners. And we'll be celebrating that over at Reedy's. Um, Non-MEA members can still come if you would like to celebrate with it. It's just going to be a $5 uh, ticket. There's going to be a little appetizers and desserts. There to in the four o'clock they actually get the presentation of their award. So just to give a heads up on that. So I'm sorry it wasn't on your list, but no, that's great. Both right. both very well deserved. Very well deserved. You did a nice job. All right. Anything else for the good of the cause? Nothing I can think of. This has been Gary Vanna. Yeah, Feel the wheel.